So I was talking to my therapist, and she said that depression, why so many people are clinically depressed, mm -hmm. especially in the African-American culture, is because trauma runs, trauma runs deep in our culture. Right. And, or from our ancestries. Right. And I remember I was asking her, is that, is that just a conspiracy theory? Like, does generational trauma actually exist? And she says that's half of it. Of course, a lot of it is circumstantial. Circumstantial, how you were raised, how you were brought up, just the environment that you were raised in can play a lot into your mental health. But she also says the other half, or 40% or whatever, comes from generational trauma. And the reason why so many people are depressed is because each and every race has their own generational trauma. It's not just African Americans, it's every race. But since we're black, we're gonna speak on African American trauma. Since we were, since we were slaves for such a long time, that trauma runs deep. If you think about it, you're 28, I'm 28. Back in 1813, 200 years ago, we would be slaves out in the field. We'll yeah. be picking cotton, and that's how our bodies are hardwired. Right. Being punished, why we react to certain things a different way. Our gen and like, and of, and of course, between us, it would be different. Right. You know what I mean? But she was saying that the way that your body subconsciously reacts to things in the way that my body subconsciously reacts to things are two different are two different are two different are, are just different yeah and, the, and and what people don't realize is that every race has their own generational trauma even even white people have their own generational trauma right but it runs deep i'm not gonna it runs deeper in the african-american culture because we come from 400 plus years of slavery and basically be, not being free and being punished and being whipped and being ostracized for the color of our skin and being less than. Right. And that trauma runs deep from generation to generation to generation. And I remember I was, I was so perplexed by it because I was like, can something like that really run for that long? Like, is that really, is it really that genetic? Yeah. And she was like, well, yeah. And I really thought about, you know, why we're so, why African Americans on average you see them mostly dominating sports like basketball, football, yeah, and stuff like that. All sports, yeah. Yeah, it's because since we were in <laughs> since we were uh, slaves back then, right? We were in relatively great shape as far as like physically. Mm -hmm. So that has carried over genetically for many, many years. Well, everywhere that people of African descent live is, is more labor oriented. Yeah. Right? Um, and so that has a lot to do with it too. So even if it was prior to slavery, you know, we have a lot of athletes from Africa as well, or, or you know, France, because most of their athletes from Africa, right? He's saying Bolt. Well, he's not from France, but he he was never he was born in Africa. Like but, his family were never slaves or anything. So I get what you're saying. Right, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of athletes, you know, like that. And the, and the reason being is just you know where we live, uh, our nurturing is a lot more labor intensive. Um, for generations, you know, we can credit that to a lot of different things. We can credit that to just our preference and credit that to um, the lack of machinery in earlier days due to, um, you know, our uh, all of our resources being, you know, um, taken and, and approached. So it can come down to several different things, but yeah, we come from more labor intensive background and it carries through till today in our physical performance. Um, as you said, white people have different um, traumas or different things they carry from past generations. And it's true, uh, every race does. And, you know, white people is not a race, that's kind of a conglomerate of races uh, into one. Um, but different Europeans are treat different things, you know, treat everything differently. Uh, Scottish people are very frugal with shows and studies with, with, with money. Um, they, they are great savers uh, with, with money. Um, very, um, they're, you know, we hear a lot about, we hear a lot about Jewish people. We, we, we're very familiar with the Jewish a demographic and um, the lessons that they ingrain in their children about uh, being frugal and about you know the parents will only pay for it you know pay for education and mm -hmm. things that teach you how to fish and that that's that's very honorable um, and so there's, there's a lot of things that different demographics pass on through generations and uh, consciously and subconsciously 
Um, and, but it really all comes down to like the monkey see, monkey do type of mentality that you know you see someone survive a certain way and do it so successfully, and you love them unconditionally. You just implement it into your own life, and so whether it's right or wrong, whether it's right or wrong, absolutely. And I think that goes down to um, the way that a lot of people handle money. Exactly, that's what I was getting at, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they talk about this with uh, certain professions, and The Millionaire Next Door is one of the one of the greatest. Um, it's a great book. It's more of studies than anything, but it shows you how each demographic. Uh, accumulates wealth or doesn't and they go into about you know how Scottish people are frugal I have one friend who uh, has proof to this <laughs> uh, for sure um, I don't know if he wants me to shout him out but anyway we have a friend named James Tweedy and he's he's super frugal man like he if that guy made 10 bucks a year he would save nine of it somehow, some way. <laughs> like that's that's. But he's, he always credits him, him being Scottish. And I thought it was just like I thought just, I just wrote it off. I'm like, what? The, I don't know anything about Europeans, or whatever. And I ended up reading, and it's true that Scottish families are that way. They can make a third of the income as other European demographics, but they'll keep way more than other demographics. It's just it's weird. That is weird. Uh, are his parents legit from Scotland? Grandparents. Grandparents, and that was okay. That okay for sure. And so, but it still passes down. And then another thing is, is parents have accumulated a good amount of, you know, money they sit on. Because parents were school teachers. The school teachers don't make much. But everyone knows, not everyone knows, they should know. If you, like I said, I can't recommend The Millionaire Next Door enough. I say Atomic Habits and The Millionaire Next Door are the, mo- the biggest determining factors where you end up financially in your life. Um, but <clears throat> those who who know it, um, also know that, um, you know, professions like specialists such as lawyers, accountants, uh, yeah, attorneys, accountants, nurses, doctors, nurses, doctors are, are, are terrible, engineers are terrible with money. Oh yeah. They, they're, they're, ter- they're terrible with money. And this is I'm just talking about, you know, the majority a vast majority. And the reason why is they spent so many years in school so many years accumulating debt, so many years using someone else's money to to make a, to to subsidize their living, that they just haven't handled money for so long. And nothing they get money in their hands, they're in their mid thirties. Mm-hmm. They didn't touch money for so long. When someone who created their business when they were young and created a business from uh, and they're actually a business owner, they hand, they handle money the best. Um, and there's one odd profession that just does super well, which we'll get into that in a second, <clears throat> but. Let's say, I'm using a using name, let's say my friend Jay, he's, he's, a, he's a business owner, he's owned several businesses. In his mid-60s, but he's very good with money. And the reason why is because his parents uh, brought him into the family business at the age of 16. And then he started another business, another business. So he knows the price of all goods, and he knows what's profit, what's not, what's, what's, what's overhead cost. He knows those things. If you put this guy who's been using handling money since he was 15 or 16, Versus someone's coming out of med school at 33, who's going to be more familiar with money and how to keep it, how to grow it between the two of them? Well, definitely, Jay, but it definitely depends on the <clears throat> environment that that person out of med school grew up in. You know what I mean? Yes, I mean, on average, a lot of people are bad with money, but there are some families who are really good with money. You know, but that, but the, but, but does the exception make the rule? Absolutely not. So on, yeah, yeah. So, so on average, Jay whose parents, who brought him into the family business and everything, will be better with money at 33 versus someone who's coming out of med school about to earn like two hundred, three hundred to $300,000 a some year. Some of them make 600, 600K and they're still yeah. broke. But here's the reason why they're still broke, though. It's more, than just, it's more than just being bad with money. It's more about student loan debt, the interest on that student loan debt, and, pay, and basically uh, the amount of expenses that it takes to become a doctor as well. Because they also have their undergraduate degree that they have to pay for. Right. And then they have their eight years of medical school. Or how, I, think, I believe it's eight years of medical school that they have to right. pay for, which is like 500 Depending on where you go, it's like right. 500 but, plus but, thousand but dollars. Listen, that, that's, 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 a, that's a sour excuse. It's, 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 it really is it's an excuse, not, nevertheless, you know, you guys know about Robert Kiyosaki's story. He went in a million dollars into debt, and he bounced back out of it in five years. And all came down to temperament. And, you know, you don't develop that when you're a professional student. You don't develop that when you're a specialist. And 
There's a lot of different things that go against specialists and why they aren't good at accumulating money. They're called UAWs, under accumulators of wealth. And to be under accumulator of wealth, what that means is if you work at a place for 10 years, you should have at least 10% of that money put aside. So if you worked in the workforce for 10 years, you made 30K a year for 10 years, well, you should at bare minimum have 30K put aside for yourself. If you don't, you're called a UAW, an under accumulator of wealth. Specialists, 90% of them, especially doctors, attorneys, lawyers, are under accumulators of wealth. Now, <clears throat> a lot of it has to do, the biggest thing that plays to that is the keeping up with the Jones, the, the perception we have about doctors. They have to keep up this idea that they look like they're wealthy because people, because in their heads and in reality, <clears throat> because in their heads and in reality, people write off their performance based off of uh, their material possessions. So when they pull up in a Mercedes and they have an expensive watch on, you expect them to be good at their jobs. Their performance is tied to their presentation. Yeah. And so they do is holding and keeping the Jones. They move to a neighborhood that costs a little bit too much. Their neighbors are living one way and they want to match what their neighbors are doing. Little do they know their neighbors are a whole different financial class than they are and they're only using 30% of their income where the doctors use 100% of theirs. Um, and a lot, of it, a lot of it is just a mentality that they feel like they have to look like they're bringing in money because that's what they're expected to do. But a lot of them are under of wealth. High, high income does not have to equal hyper-consumption. It doesn't. They buy houses that they can't afford. Well, they buy houses that, that are way above their means. They buy cars that are way above their means. They buy, like you said, keeping up with the Joneses, luxury items that they don't really need. <clears throat> and that just goes back to just... It's, this is no excuse. I'm just saying the reason for that is because just because of the society that we live in. Every you know, every two years, I believe, Apple comes out with a new iPhone, right. and basically, a lot of people are always trying to update their iPhones. And I remember I was staying in this Airbnb in Santa Monica just before I moved to Los Angeles, and I was talking to the Airbnb owner, and I said, "Hey, how are you able to afford to buy this?" And she was like, and she gave me the steps that she took. You know, yes, she bought it back in the '70s when it was a lot cheaper, mm -hmm. but. She says, the same rules that applied back then apply today. She says, don't upgrade your phone all the time. Don't buy all this stuff that you don't need. Save your money, and eventually you'll get there. Well, that's not all the way good advice because a lot of people, especially nowadays, with the amount of money that it takes to buy property in California, it's super expensive. So that goes back to how can you find other ways to earn your income? How can you find more ways to make more money? But with that being said... Keeping up with the Joneses has obviously been around for many, many years. And it's kind of, it's ingrained in us. It, it's ingrained in a lot. It's, yeah. it's ingrained in American culture. It's, it's by design. I mean, you can say that it's by design. You know, uh, when you see these commercials advertise this new vehicle or this new phone, it's the wolves giving sheep advice. Yeah. It's the wolf's son and sheep to lay down to be lunch, right? And it starts, with, I'm sorry, and it starts when you're a kid too. Because yes, you have this toy. But you see your friend in school has a nicer toy or a better version of that toy. Well, I don't want this toy anymore. I want that toy. You know, so it starts, it's, it's deeper than just like the phone and the house. You know, it starts at a very young age when we're kids. Like when they come out with a new system, I don't want this system. I want the new system. You know, like I want the set of PlayStation 4, I want the PlayStation 5 or vice versa. Yeah, but it all, it all stems from the same place. It all stems by design, you know, because truth is you can look at that kid and say he has a new toy but you can't you have to ask yourself is he healthier is he happier is he have, does he have more freedom that's a real question you want to ask him, does he have more freedom and if you think that material possessions equate to more freedom they equate to more weight they equate to more clutter but they don't, they don't equate to more freedom and right. so, it's, so it's also the metric of success you're looking at or the metric of um the metric of having more you're measuring by and, that, and, that, and that, that's cultural, but I think the biggest thing I'm trying to get at is by design. It's, 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 it's the best way to funnel money back up. The whole goal is, if you know, like they say, money's going to fall back in the same hands. The whole goal is to funnel it back in those hands as quick as possible. And so we'll make commercials and advertisements to show to you and your people so you guys are like, oh, I need the newest thing so I fit in. Oh, I, need go, I want to be popular in high school so this is the way I do it based off this show that wealthy people made.
to, 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 to fool people who aren't wealthy to funnel their money back up, right? And that's why the government gave out so many stimulus checks because they knew that it was going to go back into their pockets in, in a sense. They, they knew they'd get it back and you know, get the people quiet, and was, you know. But um, yeah, it's, it's 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 all gonna funnel back to the same places. Um, and I hope whoever's listening to this can go educate themselves, go read, and uh, hopefully you can get yourself out of that funnel as soon as possible. Most definitely, it's Black Hollywood. <clears throat>